kids, welcome to Kids TV News. I'm Jenna Zaboyna. Now that the warmer weather is here, it's a great time for exploring parks, trails, and outdoor activities. And there are plenty of ways to do that here in Hartford County. We'll catch up with County Executive Barry Glassman, who's having some fun at our new farm-themed playground at the Grove. He'll also clue us in on a new section of the Ma and Pa Trail on today's Active Kids. If summertime means business opportunities for you, our Kids Sense segment will get you on the right path with some tips on how to turn your money-making dreams into a success. But first, sometimes staying indoors on our iPads and laptops is our preferred way to spend our time. But that's not always the best for our physical and mental health. Our Kids TV News reporter Anna Perry decided to look into how much screen time is too much screen time on today's Cool Harford Schools. Yeah! Hey, hey, In this digital age, we rely on the internet and screens for all kinds of things. From distance learning at the beginning of COVID to social media for staying connected with our friends. I'm Anna Perry and I'm here to talk today with mental health specialist Christina Alton about how all these screen time is impacting our health. Hi Anna. I understand you have some questions today about how screen time is affecting your wellness. I sure do. So how can we tell if our time online has a negative impact on our mental health and wellness? What signs can we look for? That's a really great question, Anna. And I think for most everybody, it's gonna be just a little bit different, but there's definitely a mind-body connection between our screen time, what we see and what we're exposed to. And I think that we have to start by thinking about everybody only posts really good stuff online. And so when you are starting to compare yourself to others and feel worse um, after you get offline than before you got on, it's probably time to start thinking about what you're looking at online, who you're seeing, and what you're believing. Uh, but there are children who report feeling more depressed, um, maybe even a little anxious. I don't have the same things that other kids do. I don't look the way that other kids do. I didn't get invited to something that uh, all my friends are attending. So if you're feeling worse, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling really sad after you get offline, those are maybe some of the, the warning signs that you want to look at that maybe you want to limit some of your screen time. Is there a recommended time limit we should have in mind? In other words, how much time is too much online? So I recently read a couple of articles about just this topic and the one talked about maybe no more than three hours a day and that seems like a lot but I would guess that there are a lot of folks, adults and children, who are spending at least three hours a day online. But then I also read something that said there's really not a rule for it, um, especially if you're thinking about, again, going back to our last question, how do I feel after I've been online? Um, I think that if you can't do without it, if you're constantly looking and constantly checking, you might be spending too much time. If it's starting to interfere with uh, socializing with friends, uh, getting schoolwork done, if you're getting in trouble with your parents because you're maybe not doing chores or not attending family events like your parents would like you to. Again, that expert in the article I read said no more than three hours, but I think it's different for everybody, especially if it's having a negative impact on your life. I create a lot of TikTok videos. Are there some do's and don'ts that I should keep in mind? So I recently discovered TikTok. I know that that's a little strange. Um, so I don't know about specific to TikTok. I think that anytime you're online, there are some things that you need to be thinking about, no matter where you put a video or put information. For example, if it's something that you wouldn't be okay showing your parents or the grown-ups who care about you, grandparents, aunts and uncles, maybe don't wanna put it online. If you're totally fine showing it to them, that's great, go ahead and post. I also think we need to be careful because we put things online and not just people you know are watching. And so we need to be clear that we're not giving identifying information about ourselves, like where somebody might be able to find us, where we live, get to know our patterns, because as you know, not everybody online is out to be kind to us. And that's really important for us to remember as we put things online. I also think for kids your age and older, be thinking about um, future employers who do look online. 
um, colleges that you might apply to, they look online, they look at TikTok videos, they look at things that you post. And so be thinking, do I want somebody from uh, a school that I'm applying to, a job that I'm applying for, and should my grandma see what I just put online? That's important to remember. What if I see stuff online that is too violent or offensive? What do I do or who should I tell? That's another great question. Um, I would start with uh, the platform that you're on. All of the platforms give you the ability to report something that you see that's a concern for you. Um, I would then go to an adult that you trust. Maybe that's somebody that you live with or maybe it's somebody at school, a teacher or a school counselor. And especially if it uh, is something that makes you concerned for the safety of a young person, a friend, someone that you know. Uh, but I have found all of the platforms to be highly responsive. I manage some uh, social media pages for the school system and I've had to report on all three. Concerns that I had about content or somebody that commented on something that, that I posted for the school system. I think any time that you have a friend that posts anything, I really encourage you to get an adult involved. I've had students reach out to me and we've had wonderful outcomes because we were able to get them assistance and support that they needed. Our mental health involves much more than our time online. Are there things we should know to keep us safe, healthy, mentally, physically? Absolutely. When I speak to parents, I encourage them to um, do these things and encourage you to do these things. Get enough sleep. None of us gets enough sleep, especially kids. You should be getting nine or 10 hours of sleep a day and I bet you don't do that. Um, exercise at least 60 minutes a day. Uh, try to maintain a predictable schedule. That's really good for our stress levels and also um, a healthy diet eating things that are good for us, that helps our mind and body grow, all good things to maintain healthy mental health. How do we know when our mental health is taking a hit? What are some signs that we might need to take a step back and talk to somebody? So I think we have to look at our habits. If we are spending more time on our social media, on our phones, looking even at emails, um, and people are saying things like, Anna, do you ever look up from your phone? Um, perhaps that's a time for us to step away. If you need it, if you need to look because you need to see what everybody else is doing, we talked earlier about comparing yourselves to others because most people are only posting those positive things. If when you get online you feel worse than you do um, when you get off, uh, I think that's important too. I read a study that was done Again, it was probably a similar article to the one that I mentioned earlier where participants in the study were asked to rate themselves on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being feeling pretty bad, 10 being great. They rated themselves before they got online and then after they got online. And what they noticed is that people generally were feeling worse after they got um, offline. So it's at that point, if it's making you feel worse, you feel depressed, you feel anxious, you feel sad, um, and it's making it hard for you to concentrate on the things that you need to do, it probably is time to reach out to an adult that you trust and, and see about getting some help about how you might be able to limit your use. And they might have some tips and tricks for you to be able to, um, to, to put in place so that you're not spending as much time online, especially if you're realizing that your mental health is taking that hit that you asked about. What about self-help? What can we do for ourselves that can make us feel better mentally and physically? I think the five things that we talked about, sleep and exercise and eating right, limiting your stress and being predictable, those are all important, but what does that really look like? Maybe some of your downtime. I think having hobbies, what do you have to do and what do you have in your life that you enjoy as much as or more than being online. That's really important. And um, I talked to a group of students where we talked about not just knowing what your hobbies are, but having them readily available to you. Let's say you play an instrument and that's something that you really enjoy doing. Always make sure that that instrument is close by so that if you're feeling stressed, if you feel, and if that helps your mental health, uh, have it nearby so that you can pick it up and you can play it readily when you're feeling that way. Um, I encourage students to write in journals. Coloring is an amazing thing to do to help yourself. I think mindfulness practices, uh, and you can 
find some great yoga videos on YouTube, although I know we're trying to stay away from being online. But if it's for something like that, I think that's completely acceptable. That will teach you those practices, taking those deep breaths, noticing what's going on around you. But I also think that being with other people and socializing and having that one-on-one -on -one discussion with someone can be a really great thing, a gift that we can give to ourselves and get out in nature in a little bit and take all of that in. The weather's getting nice. So anything that you can do that helps you to step away from your online, um, your online activities would be great. And what if we get to a point where we think we can't handle things by ourselves? What do we do? I always, always encourage young people to find a trusted adult. That might be grown-ups that you live with, uh, it might be a close family friend, it might be another family member that you identify as someone that you trust. Uh, everybody who goes to school has a building full of adults that care about you. So that might be a school counselor, it might be uh, a, a teacher that you really trust and know that you can tell them that you're having a difficult time. Uh, your friends, parents, I know that you all start with each other. You talk to your friends because that's just what you do. But if it's too much, and it's something that even a friend couldn't handle, uh, going and talking to an adult, an adult is probably the best thing that you could do. And maybe your friend will go with you, and that might make it a little bit easier to approach that adult. But I would always encourage you to tell someone else and not keep it to yourself. Thanks, this has been really helpful. I know I'll have more questions next time. See you soon. I have to remind myself that the internet is a tool and too much time online can take me away from real life. And I like real life. I'm Anna Perry. See you next time. Slow things down and explore the timeless beauty of the Barn Quilt Trail of Harford County. Marked by hand-painted quilts, each location offers a unique adventure. Share new experiences and support local business as you discover rural Harford County, Maryland. Come experience the culture and history of rural Maryland and take a trip on the Barn Quilt Trail of Harford County. Welcome back to Kids TV News. For some of us, summertime is an opportunity to try out a new idea or plan. And if you're a young entrepreneur, that means business. Well, we talked to an economic development expert here in Harford County about ways to take those ideas and plans to the next level on today's Kids Sense. It's never too early to think about starting your own business. My name is Bonnie Barese. I'm with Harford County Economic Development, and I'm here to deliver expert advice to budding young entrepreneurs. We are seeing a lot of different types of businesses from on young entrepreneurs these days. We're seeing digital technology, app development, computer software development. Many young people during the pandemic actually discovered talents as well as learned new skills and they were able to take those and apply them to do businesses. In fact, one young person actually took that and created a gift wrapping business and during holidays and birthdays and was able to be very successful with it. We see a lot of young entrepreneurs as well incorporate a social and environmental and cultural missions into their businesses as well. So when taking an idea and bringing it to fruition when starting a business, really you have to have patience. It doesn't happen overnight. So make sure that you develop a business plan. Your, de your business plan is going to tell you who your customer is. It's gonna tell you who they are, what they do, where they live, what age are they, uh, where do they shop? So you have to develop a business plan to know who you're selling to. And also it helps you plan out not only the next year, but three years, five years, 10 years out. It's meant to be something that you continue to go back and refer to. And also you should use the resources in Harford County to help you 
grow that business, to register that business, to make it successful. We have these resources at Hartford County, such as the Small Business Development Center, that are able to do that for you for free. So how do you decide what business you want to get into? So we always say to do what you love, but there are a lot of different layers to entrepreneurship. So while you can do what you love, you also wanna look at what are you skilled at as well. So what are you good at? So if there's a part of your business that you're maybe not as strong at, but you still love what you do, perhaps that is a part that you need to prioritize to maybe shore up and take additional classes or maybe hire somebody to help you with that. But definitely do what you love. Uh, make sure that you're happy in whatever you're, however you're helping people or servicing or the product that you're developing. Some of the best advice I can give from all the experience that I've had as well as meeting a lot of different entrepreneurs is surround yourself with experts. Surround yourself with people who support you, who are able to give you resources that you need, the expert advice you need, the information you need. And if you do that, then you really will have a group that leads you to success. And you can do that through, there's a lot of free resources in Harford County. Uh, we offer it through our Office of Economic Development, as well as our Harford Business Innovation Center. We have a host of supports there. We have our Small Business Development Center. We also have our Procurement Technical Assistance Center. We have a lot of different groups that are just waiting to help you achieve those goals. So you can actually give our office a call and we can then guide you to those different groups. Harvard County is a great place to start your business at any age. And we are here for you through your path, regardless of where it takes you along your business journey. Hi, I'm County Executive Barry Glassman. It's great to be back at Hartford County's 4-H shows and other summer events, but when activities move indoors this fall, COVID is more likely to spread. If you're not sure about getting the vaccine, talk to your doctor and remember, it's free, it's easy, and it's ready when you are. We're really fortunate here in Harford County. All year long, we've got things to do, see, and enjoy. So let's get started. First, we'll head over to the Grove for some time down on the farm on today's Active Kids. Hi kids, this is County Executive Barry Glassman. Now that the weather has warmed up, I wanna to talk to you about a couple of great things to do in Harford County to have fun, and get some exercise. One of them is our new farm themed playground here at the Grove. It is so much fun to play on a farm right here on the playground. When you get to play on this playground, it's like being in a barnyard. We have ladders that you can climb and pretend that you're in a barn, slide down a silo, you can even climb up corn stalks. That's one of my favorites. And we have a tractor that you can climb on, pretend that you're running a farm tractor. And my favorite, we have a sheep that you can stick your face in and pretend that you're a Barry. <laughs> After you get done playing on the playground, we've also built some great trails here at the Grove. You can actually walk through some farm fields and walk over to Chesapeake Therapeutic Riding where there's horses. And in a couple of years, you'll be able to walk right to the new library. And on the weekends, you can come do some shopping. And sometimes we have great food here at the Grove. So spend a weekend at the Grove right here in Street, Maryland. Another great trail that we have in Harford County is called the Ma and Pa Trail in Bel Air. 
We just finished a new two mile section that starts at Williams Street and goes up to North Avenue. It's brand new, we've been working on it for a couple of years. So you can bring your whole family, your friends and lace up your shoes and walk the old mom pa railroad bed. The railroad used to go from Baltimore all the way to York, Pennsylvania and you get a chance to walk and learn about the railroad. So this summer, lace up your walking shoes, go to the website and learn more about the mom and pa, and we'll see you on the trail. But wait, there's more. We've got a whole summer's worth of fun things to do. Let's check out our Kids on the Go events calendar. Well, that's it for today's show. Thanks for sticking around. Until next time, I'm Jenna Zavoina. See ya.